newsrooms of KARK4 and Fox 16. Breaking news coverage. And good evening, everyone. This just in to Fox 16 and KARK. Breaking news. The Supreme Court of the United States has just issued a statement saying it has denied all of condemned inmates Liddell Lee's motions for executions. Simply put, Liddell Lee will be executed tonight. That's right. Execution is a go. This all according to the governor's spokesperson, J.R. Davis. This happening within the last five minutes or so. I'm Ashley Katz alongside Kevin Kelly. Want to get right to our co-anchors who are live outside the Cummins unit, um, outside the prison. They are not quite ready to join us just yet, but we want to show you exactly what we've been following all day long. Liddell Lee's execution has been in limbo up until this point. We have seen temporary stays of execution. We have seen everything be pushed back and pushed back. And here we are at almost 1130 on the dot, just getting word from the high court that they have denied the stay. It has been lifted and that means Arkansas can move forward with its first execution in more than 12 years now. This man on your screen, he was convicted more than 20 years ago and something that we've been following for days now and it looks like at the almost mid, we haven't quite made it to midnight when this death warrant expires, but again with this new information, it appears that Arkansas is moving forward. They are getting in place to carry out this execution. Yeah, we want to bring in our legal expert Marcy Manley who's been following this very closely. This all started in the early part of the day and here we are roughly 30 minutes away from the stroke of midnight and now it is a, a green light situation if you will. Yeah, from all, for all intents and purposes, the Supreme Court has um, considered each of these um, petitions um, for a stay of execution and has denied access to that stay of execution um, for uh, Liddell Lee. So with those um, decisions being made and with those orders being entered, it would seem to clear the way um, for Liddell Lee to be put to death this evening once he made those applications to the Supreme Court. Um, as both you and I had talked about, Kevin and um, Ashley, that there was nowhere further to take this. It's the final word on this issue and had the Supreme Court wanted um, to intervene, it could have. It placed to that state there. That's the only thing that's been keeping um, Liddell Lee from, from undergoing execution thus far um, after the Eighth Circuit um, basically denied his claims too. So um, at this point, it does look like um, at Cummins unit, the execution of Liddell Lee will, will move forward, um, barring some sort of extraordinary. Yeah. Liddell Lee, for those of you who may not know, was uh, convicted back in 1993 in the beating death of 26-year-old Deborah Reese. He killed her with a tire iron. Prosecuting attorney handling the case at that particular time said it was fierce, barbaric, and deliberate, and it was all motivated by money. His execution on as we speak. We want to check in with our co-anchors, Bob as well as Donna, and they are live at the Cummins unit. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of activity going on right now. We understand that some of the witnesses have already been transported to the death chamber. That's exactly right, and we just uh, heard from J.R. Davis, who is the spokesperson for the governor's office. He said that they were waiting for paperwork. That's what he said. Then he came back and he said, the paperwork is finished. The execution is getting ready to start. So my best guess is he's been moved to the death chamber, so it's so getting ready to start. process is underway, and at this point, this is where uh, Liddell Lee will be... Um uh, strapped down and he will be get an IV in each arm uh, one is uh, initially for the drugs the other one's a backup and then once uh, the IV is in place then that's when the curtain will come back and uh, the witnesses will then for the first time see the uh, the condemned inmate and uh, and the process will begin from there and according to Jesse Tenure who was here on Monday she spoke to a family member of one of the condemned inmates Monday and she said that the family said that they were removed from the witness room they were not actually in the witness room they were in a private room and watching via closed circuit yeah that's well that keeps them separated exactly and and you one would expect that so basically in the witness room it's the witnesses and it's also the media witnesses and we have three of them mm -hmm. So we'll be hearing from them. Um, they'll be, uh, you think about the activity here now, uh, it's all centered around the death chamber inside 
the, the grounds here at, uh, at uh, Cummins Prison. And the process is underway from what we understand. And at this point, too, inside the media room, there is a um, Arkansas Department of Corrections spokesperson sitting by a telephone. Mm -hmm. um, she will probably get a signal that um, the drugs are being administered. And then at that point, wait. And then the next phone call she will get is that the, uh, the condemned prisoner has died. Yeah. And then we'll probably uh, relay. Uh, he will be asked if he has any last words, and then she will relay the or he will relay the uh, the last words at that time. Right. Okay. So the witnesses will hear all of that, and then mm -hmm. once, from what our understanding, once uh, Liddell Lee says if he says anything at all. Um, the microphone will be shut off and the witnesses will not be able to hear anything. Hear so it. if there's any moaning or any kind of sound being made, witnesses will not hear that. No, but the, if there's any kind of reaction uh, adversely to any of the, uh, the drugs being administered, they'll be able to see. They'll see it. They'll, they'll see it. They so. can see it but not hear it. And then after it's over, at some point there, there will be a news conference where the witnesses will get to tell us what they saw. Uh, this will be inside, though, the media room. They will tell us what they saw. I'm sure we'll hear from a spokesperson for the Arkansas Department of Correction. And, um, and, and it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, if one of the witnesses outside of the media wanted to speak, they would let that person speak if they wanted to do it, so. It would, be, it would be up to them. Yeah. Right. But anyway, they will give us kind of a blow-by-blow -blow description of how all of this is going down. So as we just mentioned, as we just mentioned, Liddell Lee is in the death chamber and they're getting him situated to die. Mm -hmm. And the process will, uh, will unfold. I mean, that's where we are now. Now we're in the end stage waiting game. And this will be the first execution for Arkansas since 2005. And um, that's a long time. And Liddell Lee was actually originally set to be executed in 1996. He committed his crime in 1993. So it has taken all this time for us to get to this point. And Bob and I, I know we're staying on our phones, and part of that is because the Arkansas Department of Correction has been slow to give us information. So what do we do? We rely on Jesse Tenur, who is inside the media room right now, um, to disseminate information to us, uh, and we also rely on Twitter information from the Attorney General's office, so, yeah, from so the Governor's office. Um, yeah, there are a lot of things that we're trying to access right now because we are in the uh, in the middle of, um, um, of, of waiting for these things. To I have a, a tweet from Jesse, Arkansas Department spokesperson. We will begin carrying out the sentence of Liddell Lee. Arkansas Department of Correction spokesperson, we will begin carrying out the sentence of Liddell Kevin, Lee. You got a quick question? Yeah, and, and as this execution begins to unfold, as both of you well know, there there is one kind of red flag that the state of Arkansas has not been through before, and that is the use of the first drug that will be administered, specifically midazolam. We have seen several other executions in other states where this three-drug cocktail has been used before, and in some instances, the midazolam has not worked, according to uh, investigations and reports. The most notable one taking place in Oklahoma involving Clayton Lockett, who was on that gurney for 43 minutes. It was later determined that that was a, a direct result of midazolam, the misuse of inserting it in proper veins, etc. There is no room for error when it comes to Arkansas using this three-drug cocktail, even though it is the very first time it has used it. Yeah, well, I tell you what, Kevin, if there is any indication that that is a problem tonight, that's going to change the executions in this state moving forward. Certainly any of the remaining uh, inmates that were set up for this, this eight-inmate uh, run. That is one of the things that a lot of the witnesses are going to be looking at tonight. Uh, well, you know... I didn't mean to cut you off there, Bob, but one of the interesting things also is the uh, the media witness for the Associated Press. Mm -hmm. He actually witnessed that that uh, situation that Kevin is referring to in so, Oklahoma. So if this were to happen again, it would be the second time yeah. for him to see something like There's that. There's a trained set of eyes in there to yeah. find out whether or not this, this particular drug cocktail um, is effective or is it ineffective. Yeah. And, and you, you hate to say at this point, 
Um, I don't want to say that this is some kind of an experiment, but uh, this is certainly something that is on trial, and this will be looked at very closely. Well, and the midazolam issue, uh, which came up um, earlier in terms of legalities, and certainly Marcy can talk more about that, but the issue is that it doesn't sedate the person as well as it should in order to be able to administer the other drugs. The second drug will paralyze you, and then the third drug stops your heart. And so since you're paralyzed, if something were to happen, there's another tweet coming in, if something were to happen, the inmate would not be able to say or do anything because they would be paralyzed. Jesse uh, Tenor tweeting out that the uh, Arkansas Department of Correction spokesperson now sitting at that telephone. So now they're waiting for word that will come any minute on the conclusion of the execution. You know what, Bob, what I find very interesting is even though all of this is happening, and it certainly isn't happening just right inside those doors, it's in another location on this campus, um, it just sort of surprises me how calm, you know, how calm everything is out here. Although a little eerie. But calm. Calm, um, and I would say uh, to the credit of the Arkansas Department of Correction, professional. Professional, very professional. And th and they they all take their jobs very seriously. And this is, without a doubt, probably the most serious portion of the, of their job. Those involved with this. Yeah, I agree with you. Ashley has a question. Well, hey, Ashley. It's 11:40 right now. About 38 minutes ago, Jesse told us that they were starting to move those media witnesses into place. Um, we also know 12 citizen witnesses have to be in the in that viewing room as well. They will be watching. But as far as the media witnesses go, um, they will have a pen and pad. Um, that's what they've been provided by ADC. They won't have their phones with them. They can't, you know, start a timer and, you know, keep track of how long it takes for this this procedure to go through because that's a key component of this is the time and they won't have a, a clock. Yeah. Uh, they'll have a pen and pad and that's it. And, and that wasn't the case on Monday. So that's something that has changed between Monday's scheduled executions, which were both stayed and tonight's scheduled execution. Originally, uh, reporters weren't going to be allowed to bring in those pins and pieces of paper, right. but that is crucial in order for us to, as the media, to document what uh, is, is unfolding as we speak. Of course, protesters are certainly watching this very closely. We're giving you a live picture right now outside the governor's mansion where a number of protesters have gathered. Charmaine Nero uh, is covering this live for us. Um, and you can see them gathering in front of the governor's mansion. The governor's is not at the mansion this evening. He is actually at the state capitol. Uh, he was there earlier this evening for another engagement and has decided to remain at the state capitol watching and monitoring this situation very closely. But protesters, as you can see, gathering in front of the mansion this evening. And something um, different than what we have been planning for, what the ADC have been planning for, is a set time for an execution. Well, we don't have a set time. Um, we don't know if the drugs have been started. We don't know, you know, what's happening. We do know that Solomon Graves the spokesperson for the ADC, where we're getting all of our information tonight. He is already sitting at the phone right now, uh, waiting for updates from the death chamber. So um, we do know that much right now. Yeah, and I've just been told that uh, the, the governor is coming out. Maybe he's already made, actually it appears that he has made his way back to the governor's mansion. I'm not yeah. sure if he's going to be talking to the media or if he feels the need to, uh, to share his thoughts and opinions with those uh, at the protests that are protesting, or maybe he has just returned after getting all of the necessary information and contacting the necessary people to get this execution proceeded. So as a result, he is now monitoring the situation from, uh, from the governor's mansion. But uh, the, the order has been given, um, and I'm trying to figure out who we're looking at. Those might be his security detail personnel there. But um, the order has been given for this execution to proceed. Uh, it's our understanding, having talked with uh, officials at the Arkansas Department of Correction, that the process is underway and that Liddell Lee has been transferred from a nearby uh, jail cell at the Cummins unit and is actually now inside the execution chamber. That's right, and um, the last we heard from the governor's office, at least officially tonight, is that Lee will be executed tonight. Um, that coming directly from the governor's office. Um, we have our eyes on the governor's mansion there. We knew earlier in the evening he was at the state capitol uh, watching things and waiting for the Supreme Court to make a ruling. and. 
we don't believe he is there at the mansion right now, but we do want to join Donna and Bob who are there on the ground in Lincoln County. Um, they are as close as you can be right now uh, without being a, a media witness tonight. I tell you, we've been relying a lot on our support that we have out here. That would be Jesse Tenure, who's inside of the media room, Stephanie Sharp, Mitch McCoy. They've been trying to relay as much information as they possibly can to us, and they're monitoring their phones along with us. We're all looking basically at the same information, um, and the information that you're getting that you just disseminated is the same information that we have here. Uh, Something that, that actually you mentioned too about timing and trying to figure out how this is all, how this will happen, how long it will take. All of those things have to be recorded by the Arkansas Department of Corrections as far as what time the, the drugs were administered, um, what the reactions were uh, when each drug was administered, and how long it took for the, uh, the condemned man to be pronounced dead. So all that will be of record. Um, it was interesting, we, we keep talking about the pen and paper, when earlier when the reporters were told on Tuesday night they wouldn't be allowed, I think there was... Uh, there was there was a little blowback by that because right. that that's part of what we do and we're part we're there in part to record history and record what's happening um, for a number of reasons but a big part of that too is that uh, this isn't something you see every day True. and there are chances that you're seeing this and if you're trying to commit most of this to memory you're going to lose half of it yeah. so it's important for I think for I us think to write down what you're seeing and yeah I, and you're exactly right about that and also to uh, to answer uh, Ashley's uh, question, everything being documented, you mentioned that in the news conference, we should hear what that documentation was. So whatever the Arkansas Department of Correction will document during this execution, they will, I'm sure, relay that information to us during the news conference. At that time, we'll also hear from the media witnesses. And like I said before, if one of the other witnesses would like to speak, um, perhaps we'll hear from them. Maybe even we'll hear from a family member. It's really hard to say because this is an emotional thing for them. Uh, it may have it's happened. The, it, the, the, the killing may have happened uh, 24 years ago. But, you know, when you've been living through these um, these executions or a stay of execution, in this case with Liddell Lee, so many of them over the years, um, it's like that wound never Constantly, heals. And you've got to think the amount of emotion tonight, given the fact that this is an execution, the first one in the state um, for 12 years, and uh, this family has waited so long for so long. justice to be served. Um, yeah, it, it would not surprise me that they would be overwhelmed with emotion and, and perhaps would not like to speak, or they, they would. Okay, all right. You guys, we're going to send it back to you, Kevin, Ashley. All right, thank you very much, Donna and Bob. Of course, keep us updated. You know, we've been talking about uh, the scenario unfolding as we speak. Uh, another interesting thing that, that came up uh, was the fact that Early on when these executions were scheduled, one concern that was raised by uh, one of the uh, judges, in the, the federal judge, Christine Baker, was the fact that she had a very big concern that if something were to go wrong in the execution chamber at the, right. at the given time, there was, there was no phone available right. inside for the attorney representing the inmate. As a result, if something were to go wrong, that attorney would have to physically go outside the execution mm -hmm. chamber, walk down, grab a phone, and notify somebody, leaving his client unattended. I think that has since been changed, hopefully, at least right. uh, in this upcoming execution here. But there are plans in place, protocol um, that has been through the courts, um, amended by the state legislature, even that, all of that, the law, it is set, and there is a plan to carry out the executions in Arkansas. We want to take a look at what you found in looking into this protocol. According to the state's lethal injection procedure, the executioner will enter the chamber prior to the inmate's scheduled time of execution. They will inspect what's called the injection drug box, ensuring all chemicals are accounted for. The gurney will be positioned so the deputy director and executioner can directly see the inmate's face and IV infusion site. At that point, the condemned inmate will be brought in and strapped down. 
The IV team, who are licensed and have at least two years' experience, will then insert two IV bags containing normal saline. When the flow is secure and safe, the warden will give the green light. The IV team will first administer two syringes containing 250 milligrams of midazolam, a sedative that is supposed to make the inmate unconscious. If the inmate is not unconscious, backup syringes of midazolam and saline will be given in a secondary infusion site. There will then be a five-minute waiting period, at which point the deputy director will confirm the inmate is in fact unconscious. Once that is determined, the second drug will be administered. Two syringes containing 50 milligrams of vecuronium bromide, a paralytic. Then comes the third and final drug, two syringes of 120 milli equivalents of potassium chloride will begin to flow, ultimately causing the inmate's heart to stop. And that's if everything goes according to plan. Should something go wrong, such as a collapsed lane or problems with one of the uh, IV sites, mm -hmm. let's say, they will immediately reduce the flow of the chemicals at that time. The curtains will be drawn. The IV team at that point in time will make the necessary corrections, hopefully restore things to normal, if you will, right. and then the curtains will reopen and the execution will proceed from that point. All right, and all of that very important. Um, as we inch closer to midnight now, it is 1149. Um, about 18 minutes ago, that's when the governor's spokesperson told us it's understanding that Lee would be moved to the death chamber. This was about 18 minutes ago, uh, so we don't know where they are in the process at this point, but take a look right now at what you're seeing outside the governor's mansion. Um, right now, you're seeing protesters. They have been there all night holding a candlelight vigil to show their support to try and put an end to capital punishment in Arkansas. This is something um, that they have been protesting now for, for several weeks leading up to what we have been focused on in these executions here in the month of April. And there were originally eight that would be carried out. That number has now dwindled down and we're um, being told that we will see our very first um, inmate to be executed in the state since 2005 tonight. Yeah, those protesters have been in front of the governor's mansion since uh, the early afternoon. Um, not sh exactly sure as we take a live look at the Cummins unit if there are protesters out there. There were earlier in the week on Monday when the first two executions were scheduled. Not a huge gathering like what we see right now in front of the governor's mansion. In fact, only two, two protesters, excuse right. me, showing up at the Cummins unit uh, on Monday night. Not sure what the situation is there this evening um, but as we speak the process to execute condemned inmate Liddell Lee is underway exactly where we are in that process tight-lipped unsure um, but when the execution is completed um, we will be notified somehow through the Arkansas Department of Corrections um, but we'll, we're in a holding pattern yet again but at least at this point in time we know that the execution is in the process of taking place. And we want to revisit exactly how we got here. Marcy Manley has been all over this today, and you've been <laughs> keeping a close watch on everything happening in the courts. So kind of, in a nutshell, explain how we got to this point. Uh, we got to this point through two different avenues, essentially, state court and federal court. And um, the state court um, of the, the uh, Arkansas Supreme Court of Arkansas um, basically denied all of the stay of executions. Those were appealed to um, the United States Supreme Court and then um, also federal courts. The decisions there were appealed. Um, he received denials and those were appealed to the United States Supreme Court. And um, this evening there were five um, issues in front of the Supreme Court this evening and um, each of these came down as just single pages with a couple of lines of text and um, whereas 35 words spared Don Davis's life on Monday, um, even fewer words um, sent Liddell Lee to the death chamber this evening. So um, it is, it's, it's sort of um, interesting to think about that all of this process happens and to get to the one page for them to make the ultimate call of whether the law has been followed, whether the person is um, guilty and has had their complete processes allowed um, so that they can have due process before that ultimate 
you know, punishment is put into place. And the Supreme Court did take um, quite a bit of time in putting the stay in. The Eighth Circuit had put in a stay to review the cases that were pending before it. Um, and so there was reflection that the, that the court took. What I thought was interesting, we saw the split of 5-4 um, in the decisions in the early uh, releases in the in the evening on the 5-4 split regarding um, the stay of execution and certiary and um, this evening none of these orders um, show the vote or show um, which justices voted which way we simply know that um, it takes five justices to grant a stay of execution and clearly Liddell Lee did not get five justices um, to point to a, um, an issue that you had mentioned, Kevin, is that viewing policy. And one of the concerns was that if you were, if these inmates are represented by multiple counsel, um, only one of the counsel could be in the room yeah. and not have a phone to be able to alert someone if something were to go wrong or to be notified of a proceeding or a development in a proceeding. Um, and so the um, Department of Correction, uh, along with the attorneys in representing these inmates, um, came to a proposed sort of joint solution. Up to two attorneys can be in the viewing room. Um, a cell phone, it can be given to the deputy director of the Arkansas Department of Correction. Um, one of them can leave the room to be able to use that cell phone if need be to communicate with the court or with other counsel. And then, um, and then that way another council can stay inside. So that's how that is supposed to play out um, per that policy that they filed um, with the federal court. That was something that Judge Christine Baker wanted addressed so that those um, rights weren't violated for, for the inmates. Um, but that is how it's supposed to transpire. It'll be interesting to see who all was there um, for him and, and how that... Uh, how that was carried out. Yeah, it's certainly interesting to see that mm -hmm. brought up, especially, uh, I don't want to say this late in the game, but we had already, you know, the executions were scheduled. Uh, we've been waiting several years for this to be to be talked about. That's just one of maybe uh, many issues that right. uh, the state of Arkansas has been, it's been brought up and since corrected, right. hopefully, but we'll see how it all we'll well, see and how it's it been, ends. It's been quite a while since the state has had to carry out something sure. like this. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I see we're getting close to midnight at this Right. 11.55 is the time right now. Um, again, the, this did come down to the wire. Um, Arkansas's first execution in, in this many years came down to the wire. There were so many legal hurdles. Um, Marcy has outlined so many of them. But this, <laughs> yes. final, this final ruling from the Supreme Court is just, you know, it's a one page. It's one page. And, um, you know, the governor's office called a lot of these last minute filings um, blocks for justice. Um, they understood this would be part of the process, but um, again, they call these blocks for justice um, when it comes down to the victims and the victims' families. Um, so this is something that it did come down to the wire. Um, right now, we're we're waiting to get some kind of word from Cummins, but Bob and Donna are there, and they will be one of the first to know. Yeah, and, and Bob, uh, as as well as Donna, uh, I mean, based on the research that I've been doing leading up to these executions, uh, you know, the 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 typical uh, smooth sailing execution, if you uh, if you will, involving the three uh, drugs that we're using, takes between anywhere from six mm -hmm. to ten to fifteen minutes. Uh, we know the process has begun, we just don't know if the first drug has been administered yet, so we're still waiting as we take a live look at the protest outside the governor's mansion. Mm -hmm. But uh, is there any movement uh, from your vantage point being right there, and I know it's taking place behind you, but uh, to kind of describe the, the feeling and the mood there at this hour. We nothing. are still wait and see. I was going to say, point. nothing has changed since the last time we uh, talked with you. Um, in fact, uh, there has been absolutely no movement at all. We've been monitoring, you know, like I told you, we've been monitoring social media and, and getting information. And we're not it's getting information, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. But sitting you know and what? waiting for that. There's a room full of reporters waiting for that phone to ring. Exactly. And for the spokesperson from uh, the Department of Corrections to pick it up. and make that call and once that happens then that will be transmitted to us out here um, I went on to Facebook live because uh, we are on Facebook live and just kind of getting a gauge on how people feel about this and I will tell you it is really mixed 
um, it, it, some people downright angry that this execution is happening tonight, and other people feel like they're relieved. This is something that they've waited for for a long time. It's two minutes till midnight. It's almost... Uh, yeah, it's 11.58. So it's, it's very interesting when you think about the response. And Kevin, to answer your earlier question about protesters here, there are two. There were two, and I'm thinking they're still here. Uh, the same two people that were here Monday night when you were here. Nothing has changed with that. But we are not seeing anything, Bob. No, it's very quiet. And on the fact of the, on the, uh, the note of protesters, in the past, there's always been a uh, rather small crowd out here. There hasn't been a large crowd. Why is that, you think? Because um, I think one would because expect we're, to see a lot of protesters if, here. If, um, if you know the, the location of where we are, you know, it's it's kind of off the beaten path, and you wind up, I think the protesters wind up standing far away, and there's not a whole I lot see. of shelter for them out there. So, so I think it's such point? a rural part. We're not close to, a you know, a large, a larger city, Little yeah. Rock. You've got to yeah. drive about an hour and something from Little Rock. But we're closing in on midnight. Um, and, Kevin, you know, back to your, 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 your comments on the timing. Yeah, this generally is about... A 30-minute process, um, given that everything goes right. So I would imagine that pretty quickly we we should be hearing something. Mm -hmm. um, once they told us that uh, he was in the death chamber, that was about 30 minutes ago or so. So I would assume uh, just about any minute. And guys, we should be hearing something. Curious. Um, it's official. Um, it's official. Liddell Lee just became Arkansas's first lethal injection in more than a decade. That is the tweet from Jesse Tenure. It has happened. It is done. It is final. Time of death, 1156. It's over. Before midnight. So Liddell Lee, Liddell Lee is, uh, has died from lethal injection tonight. Uh, we should be getting a press conference very, very soon, and that is when some action will start happening out here, and we'll be able to get more information in terms of what went on inside. But given the timing of things, you know, Kevin, back to the timing issue, it seems like uh, the timing was right on as, as far as these things go historically. Uh, the witnesses, though, they will... They will uh tell the story about we'll, we'll, we'll get a full update on the medazolam how that worked and the and the process it has been 12 years since this was carried out here so you've got to keep in mind too that there's a, a host of adc personnel who who uh, still have jobs to do mm -hmm. uh but uh liddell lee will be leaving um the arkansas department of correction system tonight um not under his own power uh we have Mitch McCoy, who's coming out. Mitch, come on over here. Um, Mitch McCoy just left the media room, and he ran over here with information. You're probably out of breath, but what can you tell us? What do you know? So the PIO for the Arkansas Department of Correction picked up the phone at 1158. Um, the director said that at 1144, the injection started. That's the IVs, the lethal injection. Mm -hmm. A coroner declared Liddell Lee dead at 1156, and he declined to give a final statement. So some significant developments. Sure. Okay. Very significant. You know, and he didn't give a final statement. I, I wondered if he would. Uh, when he was asked what he wanted his last meal to be, he asked for communion. So um, for some reason, I just felt like knowing that he was thinking spiritually, sure. then he would have something to say. We do know that Liddell Lee's attorney will be talking to the media tonight. They're going to be holding a news conference. And then also, we did know that the family of Liddell Lee's victim was in that chamber, and she declined. The family is declining to talk tonight. Okay. When you say in that chamber, we, we've been reporting that the family was in a separate room. Were they in the same room with the witnesses? You, let, let me re-clarify. Okay. They're on prison grounds. Yeah. They witnessed Unclear through at this a point. closed they, circuit, they, I Sure, believe. yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, the, but the family's declining to give a comment tonight. And we were wondering if they would. Bob, you and I were Thank talking you, about God. that. Sure, yeah. it, it would be, it, you don't have to leave yet, that it, it would be very emotional for them to actually speak oh. about it right now. You've got to think that uh, for the past 20 years, they've been wanting to see justice served, and they've been looking for this, and they've been fighting for it, and there have been clemency hearings, there have been all sorts of things that they have been through, and they have literally poured themselves out emotionally to get to this point and now it's here so there, there is a great burden 
yeah. lifted off them tonight. So, And they probably need time to process it all before they actually speak. Um, the protesters, from what I understand, at the governor's mansion, lots of tears, lots of tears. Obviously, they did not want to see this happen. Um, you do have people who are opposed to the death penalty. They, mm -hmm. they say, you know, one wrong doesn't make a right, or two wrongs, excuse me, um, doesn't make a right. Um, you, you, and that's what we're getting, too, on social media. Well, we're getting a lot of people who are just very upset that this is actually happening to Well, then there's a lot of people, too, that are very upset that it has taken this long. Justice delayed is not justice granted. Would be the, uh, you know, the argument, and that this is this is taken far too long. That this person was um, found guilty of a heinous crime uh, 20 years ago, and and here we are just now, justice being served. So some folks say this should have happened a lot sooner. Well, you know, he was scheduled for execution three years after he committed the crime. The crime happened in 1993. It was in uh, 1996 that he was scheduled. His first scheduling for execution that obviously did not happen but and then even down to the tonight. wire we went through we went all the way up to, i mean think about something that's happening here uh members of the united states supreme court were fully engaged in yeah. this evening uh to make sure that the process was moving in the right direction and everything was working in the, in the right way of justice right and that was their conclusion this evening and you know what, uh, Bob, it, it's interesting because you and I were, uh, were talking about, we may be seeing witnesses here. Why don't you zoom in? Yeah, I think we've got Why the, don't you uh, zoom in? Those are, uh, media those are the are media back. witnesses that are arriving back for the news conference. And once they get through that news conference, we will certainly know more in terms of uh, what happened. Uh, Mitch McCoy was here to give us some information, and we do appreciate the fact that he was able to, to gather some amount of information, but we certainly do want to hear uh, what those who were actually in that witness room saw. We want to know what they saw. We want to know how they feel after seeing it. Uh, and as we've mentioned, the reporters were able to take notes. So, you know, it, it, whatever they... <laughs> may not be able to remember off the top of their heads maybe they wrote it down yeah and this is also you know as as much as we talked about this they they've got the paper there to record their their observations and things like that there are some things they will or won't remember there are many things that will be seared in their memory for the rest of their exactly. lives um and some people that i know in the past who have witnessed these executions um and they've gone off without a hitch you know it it, it affected them and how right. can it not right. um and they 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 elect not to see it again so it's one of those it's one of those things um but it is and i think there are some people and you've got to commend them volunteer witnesses that sit up because something like this needs to be witnessed and needs to be recorded by by other people in society and it's also a thing too you know you you bring them bring in the argument of um does this do its job by punishing the condemned but also by um raising a, a red flag or shooting up a flare that this is justice and you commit a if, crime. If you this commit could a crime, th this is this is a wait. This is waiting for you. I yeah. mean, it's been on hold here for 12 years in Arkansas. Clearly, um, that's no longer the case. We've got a full half a month of, of executions still to get through, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things. Will this be the deterrent? There's always there's always been that argument: is the death penalty a, a, a deterrent? Because certainly we we see that you know people people are getting murdered still. Um, but just to what kind of an impact this will have on some folks, you know, that's that's always hard to say. Okay, hang on one second here. Staff administered first drug at 11.44. At 11.44 p.m., Lee's time of death, 11.56. Is that the tweet yeah, that they so. wanted me to... Uh, to issue out. I guess that's what's coming out of the news conference right now. Jesse Tanura is inside the media room, inside the Cummins unit, and they are in the process of, uh, of, of having a news conference. So we're going to hold off a little bit. We're going to have more information for you in just a short amount of time. But uh, we do see some people who are I think those are basically workers right there that, that we're looking at right now. Um, so, yeah, what they'll do right now is that they'll assemble in there and they're going to have their press conference. Uh, it will be an Arkansas Department of Corrections spokesperson will go do a blow-by-blow -blow on what happened. Um, they'll, even, they'll even be describing, you know, body movements, chest heaving, um, last sigh, 
things like that, the gaze of the inmate, um, whether or not their eyes closed. You know, it gets rather detailed. Um, don't want to get too much of it, but but it, it does, and that that just puts those of us who didn't witness it in their room. Yeah. And then the media witnesses will step up and they'll announce who they are, who they work for, and what they saw. Hey, Don, see something different. Don and Bob, real something, quick, something different to say and something different to pass along. Kevin, go ahead. Yeah, we just got uh, we just got a statement from Attorney General Leslie Rutledge. Uh, That's right. She's referencing the 24 years um, that the Reese family. We're speaking about Deborah Reese. Um, that they have waited to see justice done. If we can pop that up, um, she said at the end, "I pray that the lawful execution helps bring some closure to the Reese family." Um, she said this lawful sentence, which she keeps referring to it as a lawful sentence um, of a jury, which has been upheld by the courts through decades of challenges, has been carried out. The family of the late Deborah Reese, who was brutally murdered with a tire thumper after being targeted because she was home alone, has waited more than 24 years to see justice done. And again, we have learned here in the last few minutes that it took a total of 12 minutes for Liddell Lee to die by lethal injection. Again, this family, they've waited 24 years to see the sentence carried out. And as we heard from Fox 16's Mitch McCoy, uh, he, the family, uh, the victim's family has declined uh, interviewing. Uh, and you have to respect that. You also have to understand that considering uh, the amount of years they have waited for what I'm sure they're calling justice to finally be served. Um, so that's a, a, an interesting fact. Of course, we're waiting for those who were able to witness the execution to come forward and share their thoughts of, as Bob and Donna have been talking about. But um, as you mentioned, 12 minutes from start to finish. And when you think about it, there in between the administration uh, or administering of those drugs, there was a five minute waiting period at which point the deputy director or the executioner had to wait and confirm that in fact Liddell Lee was unconscious before administering the remaining two drugs. So right. if you remove those five minutes, the execution procedure uh, in terms of administering the drugs only lasted seven minutes. And that's right. And it all started at 1144. That's when the midazolam was administered first. And um, there have been a lot of questions about this drug, whether or not it would fully sedate an inmate. And uh, it appears that the drug did what what the state said that it was going to do tonight. Yeah. And, and, and has argue, they've argued this, you know, even up until this week. And, and speaking of the midazolam, I'm curious to see what the witnesses might be able to provide to us as it pertains to how they checked Liddell inmate to determine he was in fact unconscious. In previous executions outside of the state of Arkansas, that has been determined by checking the inmate's eyes or even pinching the inmate to see if there's any type of reaction. Um, whether that was a protocol or a procedure that was followed here in the state of Arkansas remains to be seen. Hopefully the witnesses will be able to tell us how that was determined that he was in fact unconscious, thus allowing the next drug to be administered. That's right, and we're learning from Jesse that uh, from the media witnesses, they're telling reporters that Lee was asked twice for his last words. They gave him a second opportunity, and he did not respond there. Um, we do know that he was given a last meal about 4 o'clock this afternoon, which he declined. He, he opted for communion. That was his last meal. So um, interesting to see um, some of his, his last movements. Yeah, and he was even asked if he wanted to uh, to have his last meal uh, with the with the prison population of which he also declined, opting for, as you just mentioned, communion. Um, but the state of Arkansas has, in fact, executed its first condemned inmate in 12 years. Uh, a lot of eyes certainly on the state of Arkansas to make sure uh, this was done uh, with, with, without any major problems, uh, including the legal challenges, but that is certainly the case tonight. Uh, first inmate put to death in 12 years. As you can see, this is a, a live shot right now outside of the Cummins unit. We're also being told that protesters who have gathered outside the governor's mansion, Ashley, as you can see, uh, have now slowly uh, filtered away. That's right. There were about 30 to 40 people estimated at one point there at the governor's mansion. They've gone home for the evening. Um, at this point, we're waiting to hear uh, from the media witnesses. We're also being told from Jesse that 
uh, the uh, Liddell Lee's attorney is going to speak with the media tonight. We will mm. hear from him. He was uh, likely one of the witnesses there tonight. So we want to go out back to Cummins where Bob and Donna are right now. You guys have any new information? Now, essentially, what's probably happening inside there is a press conference uh, in front of cameras with all these folks um, presenting exactly what it was that they witnessed. And there may be some Q&A back and forth, um, of course, with uh, Liddell Lee's attorney when he's up there. And so this could be a little bit of a process. And then, um, then once these folks are excused, then um, they'll head this way and we'll try to get them to you as soon as possible. Yeah, we, uh, we are hoping, we're efforting getting one of the witnesses to, uh, to talk to us tonight. So uh, we have some folks working on that. I've been sending some uh, tweets to both, or not tweets, but uh, text messages to, uh, to Jesse Tenura as well as Mitch McCoy, who are in that room right now during the press conference to make sure that uh, we can get someone out here who can talk about what they saw tonight. And, and, you know, Kevin, we go back to the, uh, the protocol, you know, this is going to be one of those things, the argument against uh, Medazolam is going to be harder to make because it appears that this, this execution went off uh, as planned uh, without any, any flaws, at least. We it presume that right that now. Way. Yeah, we haven't, yeah. Heard, we haven't heard otherwise, but the timing of it and, um, and the fact that and we're not seeing any tweets to the Bob. contrary. Well, you know, we have a lot of, we have a string of cars and leaving right now, so these could be witnesses. family members as well as witnesses that are leaving and workers. I think uh, Monday night when you guys were here, you saw a lot of workers that were leaving, so that's part of it. They've been here for a very long time and ready to... Uh, to go home. Um, got something else from Jesse. Media witnesses. Lee appeared to lose conscious very quickly, and only thing they could see was his face and arms. Uh, media witness. Lee was asked twice for his last words. We just uh, we just said that. So that kind of addresses the issue of the midazolam drug. Um, if he if he actually yeah lose was able to lose consciousness that quickly and, and easily it seems like the drug worked and when the other drugs were administered didn't show any reaction to them right so right which that was kind of the, the, the given the fact that the execution of, of someone who killed someone was was why we were here but also a lot of eyes were were watching that the administering oh, as lamb and how that was going to happen sean murphy one of those eyes watching from the associated very press critical because tonight. he yeah. actually witnessed a botched execution and it dealt with midazolam so that was a set Oklahoma. of critical eyes that, uh, that a lot of folks want to hear and, his and take on that's this. why i do want to hear from him because i want to hear i mean even though we heard media witness and perhaps that was him but uh i guess there's another tweet from jesse here give me a minute to uh clear uh, media witness, it appeared Lee did not suffer. So that's, I mean, that's what we're talking about right now. At least 12 civilian witnesses, two attorneys, and the Department of Correction officials. Also and if I'm there, not mistaken, no I think I just saw anything. a hearse that just drove off the grounds. If so, that was Liddell Lee. That was At least it quick. appeared, it appeared. That would have been very me. fast. Um, so anyway, it seems like everything actually happened the way that uh, the Arkansas Department of Correction wanted it that to. That they practiced, they trained, and they, they put all these protocols in place, and, and they went went down the way it's supposed to. Yeah, and from what I understand, the, uh, the, uh, the protesters outside the governor's office or outside the governor's mansion, they're dispersing. There were lots of tears, lots of sorrow. They didn't want to see this happen, mm -hmm. but it's over now. And it's it's uh, it opens up the door to the what we have to move forward with because we will be back here Monday night. We've got two, two more two inmates more that are scheduled executions. to be to be executed. Um, and I'm not. And I guess we know if we could bring Marcy in for a second, um, if we could jump ahead to Monday night. I'm not sure the weight of their appeals or if they're uh, exercising any, any request for stay. Um, I, I think a couple of them had said under the grounds of, of physical inability. The fact that they are not uh, physically, perhaps physically able to to be to well, be put to death by the Marcel, drugs because of their son, Marcel Williams. Marcel Williams, uh, he he actually, and Jack Jones will be the other person who's scheduled for execution. But Marcel Williams, I read where when he was arrested for his crime, he weighed about 198 pounds, and, and in the course of the years. 
two decades, he put on another 200 pounds. Yeah. So the and question is, will these drugs actually are they strong work enough for him? So a number of questions still ahead, but um, but uh, tonight um, slowly wrapping up. Um, Monday will be Monday, but again, we're still waiting on some witnesses to, to come out here and um, and hear their take on what happened tonight. Okay, we're going witnesses. to toss it back to yes. you in the in the studio. We want to take care of a couple things out here, get our ducks in a row. We really need to get a media witness. Yeah, all right. So we'll talk with you, you guys, in just a second, okay? Get Sounds back good. to work, and we, we're learning from Jesse right now that the governor has called this the most grave responsibility he'll ever have. The right thing was done. Yeah. That is what J.R. Davis um, has told reporters tonight that, um, again, this was one of the, the biggest responsibilities. And he, he has talked about that leading up to tonight and how he felt confident that the state would be able to carry out these sentences. And it looks like they did tonight at 11:56 with Liddell Lee. Yeah, and let's let's not forget about uh, the the victim's family. In fact, the the governor's spokesperson sending out a tweet via Jesse Tenure, uh, who works for us, saying that the victim's family can go to sleep tonight for the first time in years, knowing that justice has been carried out. Uh, obviously, a, a very d tough and difficult time for them, and it's been years in the making. My family has lived in the shadow of this event our entire lives. In February 1993, 27-year-old Liddell Lee robbed and strangled 26-year-old Deborah Reese in her Jacksonville home. He then beat her 36 times with the same tire thumper her husband gave her for protection. Her son was only six years old. My mother was everything to me. <laughs> 24 years later, Joseph Lucky, now a grown man, whose loss still affects him every day. When she was ripped from my life, it started a spiral that I almost didn't recover from. Lee was sentenced to death two years after Reese's murder. Prosecutors say she wasn't his only victim. Lee committed violent crimes against five women, all in the Sunnyside area of Jacksonville, some involving rape, some ending with murder. His victims' ages ranged from 17 to 70. He is the embodiment of the evil that should never have to exist in this world. After 21 years on death row, Lee maintains his innocence. He and his attorney arguing he deserves post-conviction DNA testing. He's not here to ask for forgiveness. He's not here because he's remorseful for, uh, for a murder he didn't commit. His victim's son asking one thing, let it happen. Let us have some closure. Let this end. Let us step out from the shadow. And that was the son of Deborah Reese here. You heard there, Joseph Lucky, um, who was there at Cummins tonight, uh, able to watch his mother's killer be put to death. Yeah, closure, uh, if you will. They might, they might call it something different. Obviously, a range of emotions, as we can only imagine, uh, they must be feeling. They have declined uh, interviews with the media, and certainly we will respect that. We understand that, um, and that is by all means their call. Maybe at a later point in time, they might feel differently, but uh, for them, uh, this chapter has been shut. Right. And um, closure, that is what the governor's office is reiterating. The family will have closure, and that is what they want to focus on right now. It, it, it is somber, and they acknowledge that. Um, it has been tense at times, and I'm sure it has been frustrating um, oh. this night as, as it is carried on now into the morning of April 21st, um, as we are learning tonight at 1156 Liddell Lee was declared dead. And the spokesperson uh, for the governor uh, tweeting this uh, through uh, Jesse Tenor saying uh, this uh, calls this a somber night and says the state was able to carry out the process well. Uh, they have been uh, fighting for these executions uh, for the victims families for decades. The governor very passionate and very outspoken about this um, saying that uh, he set these dates uh, for these executions to take place. Um, granted, uh, the first two were were not um, executed, and a second inmate who was supposed to be executed tonight, his stay was granted. But a different story unfolding for Liddell Lee. Mm -hmm.
who at 11.56 tonight became the first Arkansas inmate to be executed in the state of Arkansas since 2005. That's right, and the first time the state has ever used the three-drug protocol involving midazolam. A lot of controversy surrounding that and, and how the state acquired that drug, whether or not it was effective or not. Or not. But from start to finish, it took 12 minutes for Lee to die by lethal injection tonight. We're learning that. Uh, we want to go now back to Cummins, where Bob and Donna are standing by right now with some new information. We are still waiting on that media witness, but we do have J.R. Davis here, spokesperson for the governor. Uh, how did it go? Um, well, I, I spoke to the governor uh, shortly after, and uh, he had a few words he wanted to uh, express to the media that were in the, um, the media room, and that's just that it is a somber night across Arkansas. That this is he, that he understands that this is the, one of the most grave responsibilities he'll ever have, um, and um, uh, that it's a night of reflection. But in the end, uh, we know the right thing was done tonight, and justice for the first time since 1993 will be provided uh, to um, Deborah Reese's family. And, and I think that's that's the important takeaway from tonight. But did he have anything to say about the, uh, the personnel here at the Arkansas Department of Correction, the folks who? Uh, who carried out something that hasn't been done here in over 12 years. They did an outstanding job uh, under the circumstances as well. Obviously, a late decision from um, the Supreme Court, uh, but ADC staff, as we've said all the time, the governor has the utmost confidence in them and, and Director Kelly, and um, uh, that, that um, showed through tonight. So thank you all very, very much. I appreciate okay. it. Okay, all right. Well, JR, thanks very much. JR Davis from the governor's office, and you heard what he had to say there. Uh, I guess what we need right now is just to hear from someone who actually saw what happened. And this is one of those things that's going to take a little time for them to, to wrap up in there. And, uh, you know, hearing from JR kind of puts, puts it, I guess, it, uh, puts it in perspective, exactly. I yeah. mean, it's a somber night. Um, uh, justice, um, this, this end of justice is the extreme part. Um, a life was taken because a life was taken. And uh, it's, it's an equation that no one ever wants to be part of, but uh, it's the justice system. It's the justice system in the state of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how we do things here. Uh, and it happened tonight, first time in 12 years that it actually, uh, actually came to fruition, I guess you could say. And you were right, you did see the hearse pass by. So immediately they put his body in the hearse and it's being taken. And I've seen that and that, that's what they do home. for because that's so you know, it's it's just to I think that's protocol and as soon as possible and moved off the grounds. Uh, as I mentioned, um, it's the first time he's been off ADC property uh, in uh, over 20 years, but as I mentioned, not under his own power. Um, Jesse Jenner sent out another tweet. Legal Lee's legal team left without making a statement. No more statements tonight. Expect updates tomorrow afternoon. So that doesn't mean we won't get a media spokesperson to come out here, but um, but it sounds like the press conference is over. Um, at least as far as his legal team is concerned, um, that's for sure. Uh, and and for, again, too, you've got to think that they have invested a great deal of their time and their emotions and um, their efforts into trying to keep this from happening. And um, they've become very close to the inmate. And yeah, I think it, I looked at that. No more statements emotion. tonight. Yeah. No more statements from his legal team. Not right. necessarily the folks that right. are in Just the news the, conference. Right. The yeah. They're going to pack things up and uh, and head yeah. home. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, social media, a lot of people are able to vent, and I'm seeing a lot of that tonight. Um, they're venting one way or the other, and uh, frustration because it happened, uh, frustration because some people um, are not happy that it happened, or satisfied, I should say, that it happened. It's just, it's, it's just what you expect. One of the most expect. polarizing parts of our justice system uh, is capital yeah. punishment. Yeah. and. Um, it's definite. It's it's and it's a hard reality that um, when you're in a state that has capital punishment, and if you take a life, your life will be taken in return. Yeah. If it rises to that level, and this certainly did. Um, Deborah Reese was a young woman who was uh, home alone, and um, husband was on the road, and she was violently beat to death. 
Her husband was a truck driver, and he gave her a tire iron well, to tire protect... tire thumper. A tire thumper. Which is a, a small... It's probably like half of an axe handle. Okay. And it's what they use to, to pound their tires to make sure they're okay. inflated. I, I've it's seen a very it. dense piece of piece of wood. I've seen it reported as tire iron, but thanks for the clarification. Um, but he left her with that so that she could protect herself, which ended up being the same weapon that actually took her life. Took her life. So we're watching a lot of cars leave here tonight. A lot of the workers are leaving. They've been here. I think they come in around noon for these executions, and they're here for a very long time. I'm sure there will be a shift change at, at some point, but uh, probably more people than usual, more workers than usual, and people on the ground tonight for this execution. And it's not, it's not, uh, not to get off point, but, but once there's a shift change, it's not like anyone else leaving work. I mean, they've got to stop at a gate here. Their car has to be checked. Uh, trunks have to be open because you can't just drive off of prison grounds without... Uh, going through somewhat of a fine-tooth comb. Okay, well, it looks like we are about to get Sean Murphy over here to speak with us about what he witnessed. And Sean, has, he has witnessed uh, executions before, so this is not, yes, his, uh, this not, is not his first time. And um, Sean, yes. come on, we're on live right now. Life. So thank you for joining us tonight. Right. How did this execution go in your opinion after seeing others? Uh, well, it uh, really appeared to go without any major problems. I mean, the execution began, and he appeared to lose consciousness pretty quickly. Uh, his eyelids began to droop, um, and uh, within a couple of minutes, he was uh, appeared to be completely unconscious. Uh, they waited five minutes to do a consciousness check, and uh, at that point, the, the member of the execution team, you know, uh, shook his head flicked his eyelashes, rubbed his sternum, didn't show any signs of consciousness. And so, judging by the protocol, that's when they started the second and, and third round What's of the second drug administered? Any sign of physical distress at all that you could see? None. And, uh, of course, I, ha I have witnessed one other midazolam three-drug protocol that went, went smoothly, and th this one was very similar to that. But you've also witnessed one that did not go so well. Right. Clayton Lockett in April of 2014 in Oklahoma. And, um, of course, that, that was uh, problematic yeah. for, from, from the beginning. Um, but uh, at the heart of the debate. An investigation later revealed that, uh, that the problem centered around an IV that had become dislodged. And so, in this case, uh, he had two IVs, one in each arm and uh, things appeared to go, like I said, pretty smoothly. You know, I, I have to wonder, after watching, uh, witnessing so many executions, and of course you're doing it on a professional level, and we need to hear from people like you. We need witnesses like you to let us know how it happened and to make sure that it was done right. But personally, emotionally, how does it make you feel? Well, I approach it as, uh, as an important responsibility that I have as a member of the media. I feel like I, I'm kind of the eyes and ears of the public inside the death chamber. This is an awesome uh, power that the state is exercising to take a person's life. And so I, uh, I feel, I just kind of feel, I just kind of take it on as a professional, uh, try to take a professional attitude in there and just, um, you know, just try to do my job and try not to be emotional about it. Which is, I, I, well, we know it's difficult to do. What was your your initial take when, when last week, um, media witnesses were not allowed to bring in um, a pad, paper, anything like that? They, they were just going to go in there, bear, witness it, and then come out. I was a little concerned about how good my memory is. Uh, I just was planning on what I thought were the most important elements to remember. And I was just grateful that they changed their uh, policy, allowed us to at least have a, a pen and paper in there. It made it a little easier to obviously stay on top of the timeline, what exactly happened. And, and how does how it work in the past? Have, have you seen uh, correction departments in the past say no pen, no, pen, no paper, 
Uh, well, all the executions I've uh, witnessed have been in Oklahoma, and uh, like here, the uh, Department of Corrections provides us with a pen and paper, and um, and some of my colleagues in other states that uh, carry out executions, uh, same thing. They're right. allowed to bring it in. So, tell us about some of the other witnesses outside of the media witnesses that were in the room. So, uh, as best as I could tell, there were about a dozen civilian witnesses. Uh, at least two lawyers and then uh, some members of the DOC staff that were in the viewing room with us and uh, pretty much you know it's a very solemn occasion so no one was speaking or talking and um, they just uh, th there was no no emotion uh, I mean no outbursts or anything like mm -hmm. that I, I don't know if there were any members of the victim's family I'm, I'm not they, sure they have them via closed circuit TV. Okay. So room. these were, I guess, just civilian witnesses, media witnesses, and uh, some attorneys, and uh, no one said anything, and that was it. We also learned that the attorneys for Liddell Lee did not want to speak tonight. Did you try to talk to them at all? No, I didn't. did, did not try to talk to them. They moved us directly from the viewing room into a, a van with just the other media witnesses and then took us away, so... So what would you say this does to the argument of Medazolam in the state of Arkansas moving forward, at least until the end of April? Yeah, I mean, the fact that it was uh, carried out without any problems, I I'd suggest, uh, I mean, I, I would assume that probably moving forward they would uh, you know, uh, intend to use it again. Well, well, going back to what you said, it sounds like it really might not have been the drug. It was the way the IV was actually put, placed into the uh, inmate's arm, right? Uh, with Clayton Lockett? Yes. Yes. And it was actually in his leg. And that was part of the problem was they couldn't find an IV in the arm. So they uh, inserted it into a vein in his groin and then covered, it was covered with a sheet. So they couldn't actually see, see the what insertion was site. Right. And so uh, that added to the problem. In, in t t tonight's execution, both IVs uh, were visible by the member of the execution team. He checked frequently both injection sites, and uh, I think that probably you know, helped it go off without any problem. Okay. Okay. All right, well, we want to thank you very much for coming over and talking with us. and sharing with us what you saw tonight and like yeah, you said it is yeah. very somber it's uh it's sad in many ways but a lot of people feel like justice has been served tonight happy to do it thank you Thanks. well there you go uh, as close as we can get you inside the uh, the death chamber this evening um a set of eyes who have witnessed uh executions in the past and uh has uh, displayed it just exactly what happened this evening and it seemed to be a very smooth process everything went according to plan yeah and a lot of issues about the drug midazolam. No problems with it tonight, that's for sure. So Kevin, it Ashley? Seemed, seemed like he lost consciousness pretty quick, and then shortly after that, uh, the other drugs were administered, and then death soon followed. Um, I am being asked uh, about Stephanie. She's getting an interview with uh, Sean Murphy right now, so we'll let her do that. Uh, for the time being and and it has definitely quieted down out here um, you can see a little bit of movement with cars behind us people leaving uh, it's over bottom line is it's over it, it is and uh, as we mentioned too, uh, Liddell Lee's body has been uh, taken off uh, the grounds of the Cummins prison so that's the end of this chapter okay. Monday we'll be back because there are two more scheduled executions uh, and no doubt another round of appeals and attempt at stays. Uh, how far that carries us into the evening on Monday night, we will find out then. Guys? Good job out there. Yeah. Appreciate the updates of some, uh, a great, some great information from Associated Press uh, Sean Murphy, right. who described what he witnessed and... Uh, Appears to have gone according to protocol. Yes. Exactly according to protocol, which you have researched extensively. Yeah. But we've also got some information just into Fox 16, too, via social media. That's right. We're, you know, we haven't heard from Lee's attorneys, but we are hearing from the Innocence Project. That is 
one of the groups, according and also along with the ACLU, who had filed motions on behalf of inmate Liddell Lee. They are responding to tonight's execution, um, basically in a nutshell, saying that Arkansas rushed the process and denied Lee the chance to prove innocence through updated DNA testing. You'll remember earlier in the week, post-conviction DNA testing was denied um, in the courts. So yeah. um, it sounds like this is a fight that um, they may continue on now that um, Lee is dead. Yeah, and we'll be sure to put that on, on both of our uh, station websites, fox16.com and arkansasmatters.com, if you want to read it in its entirety. Uh, an interesting uh, point that Sean Murphy, going back to what, what he witnessed, um, was the consciousness test. Um, in the research that I had, uh, that I had done prior to the, this execution, there was no indication as to what staff uh, who are responsible for, for the execution would do to determine if, in fact, uh, an inmate uh, is unconscious before they can administer the second and third drugs. But as we heard from him, after waiting for that five-minute period, after the midazolam was administered, they then shook Liddell uh, Lee's head, they flicked his eyelashes, mm -hmm. and when they de determined that there was no reaction, that's when they went ahead and administered the second and third drugs. And that's right, and we heard from the governor's office, they praised uh, ADC tonight, calling it an outstanding job um, under the circumstances, what went on there. They also praised the ADC director, Wendy Kelly, and this is the first execution she's presided over in her tenure. Um, it seems as if the state is pleased with how, how everything went tonight. Yeah, and that, there was a lot on the line, if you think about it, uh, oh, yeah. considering all, all the public relations, uh, you know, every, all eyes watching the state of Arkansas, uh, not just nationally, but internationally as well. When you and I were down at the Cummins unit on Monday, there were uh, news crews from London, from Canada, the BBC was there doing a documentary. Um, so, you know, a lot of eyes on the state of Arkansas. And uh, from a PR standpoint, uh, this went as smoothly as one could possibly want, regardless of where you stand on the issue of, uh, of, of the death penalty. And that's right. And, you know, it's the legal challenges they were expected, um, maybe not expected to go quite up until this late into the night, early into the morning, but we have, you know, the governor has set two more executions to happen on Monday, and so it, to be determined, because we could see more of these legal fights, um, especially as we head toward Monday now um, with those scheduled executions but right now we have a news conference we want to bring to you right now at least some footage from it let's take a look so, uh, my name is Sean Murphy I'm a reporter with the Associated Press S-E-A-N M-U-R-P-H-Y so um, we entered the execution chamber at about 11.40, the three of us. Uh, we were seated in uh, the viewing room with uh, four windows in front of us covered with a black curtain. The uh, curtains opened at about 11.44. Um, DOC director asked inmate Lee if he had any last words and uh, she actually asked him twice and he, he did not respond. And then the warden announced that officials are ready to proceed with the execution, uh, which began at 11.45. Um, inmate Lee was, um, his eyes began to droop and then ultimately closed. There was a member of the execution team who performed a consciousness, consciousness check beginning at about 11.49. Um, he shook the inmate's head, flicked his eyes, um, appeared to rub his sternum, and the inmate did not appear to be conscious at that point. Um, and then it appears at 11.55, um, the member of the execution team ap appeared to do a second consciousness check and at that point also checked uh, for a heartbeat with a stethoscope and then called for another member of the execution team, uh, I believe the coroner, to enter the death chamber and um, that coroner 
pronounced inmate Lee dead at 11.56. And then the um, ADC director um, came out and, and ran through the timeline and, and announced that the uh, execution had been carried out. The curtains closed, the witnesses and the three of us exited the uh, death chamber. So, you guys want to add anything? Or? I think that's... No, I have a question real quick. Yeah. You've covered executions before. Did anything appear to be a mess compared to other executions? No, he, um, the inmate appeared to lose consciousness very quickly. Um, didn't, I mean, within a matter of minutes, his eyes closed and um, he, he appeared I mean, I, I could tell that his chest was moving slightly, appeared to still be breathing for the first few minutes, and then at the consciousness check, he did, didn't show any signs of consciousness. Did any of the family witnesses say anything, react in any way, show emotion? There was, uh, there, I, I'm not certain who all was in the chamber with us. There, was, there were at least 12 civilian witnesses there were two attorneys, and then there were some DOC officials, and I didn't hear anyone say anything, frankly. It was very quiet in there, and everyone was, was watching. And we were seated at the front row, so we couldn't see any the reactions of anyone behind us. From my perspective, it was difficult to tell exactly. I mean, there were, uh, his arms were extended, uh, so one arm was facing us um, with the IV in it. Mm -hmm. And I, I honestly couldn't tell when the actual drug started to come into his arm. The, the, the IV line was clear, but you could not see the drugs moving through it. Um, So it, it, it's, it's hard to say. I would say the his eyes closed over a process of about two or three minutes. You could they drooped and then became closed and they did not open again at any point other than when the, they were opened by the coroner doing the check. Watching uh, re recorded uh, uh, t uh, information that uh, just taken place inside the media room uh, involving the three members of the media who actually witnessed uh, the execution of Liddell Lee, Sean Murphy with the Associated Press, and breaking it down minute by minute by minute uh, in what seemed and appeared to be a very smooth and uncomplicated execution, which is exactly what the state of Arkansas was hoping for and that appears to be how it all played out. That's right. He told us about their front row seat and the 12 citizen witnesses that were also seated behind them in the room. There were two attorneys there for Liddell Lee as well and also some ADC staff. Um, they talked about the, I guess, the director of ADC coming out and asking him if he had any final words. Asked him again, no response. Um, that's when the warden said the execution can begin. Uh, we also heard about how they checked for consciousness, some facts that we did not know um, earlier on how, how they would go about checking. We learned about that. We also know that they checked for a heartbeat around 1155. That's when they called the coroner in and declared Liddell Lee dead at 1156. Yeah, we want to check back in with uh, Bob Clausen, Donna Terrell, also joined now by Jesse Tenor, who was in the media room uh, when those uh, interviews uh, were unfolding. Uh, guys, maybe she can provide some insight as well as to how this, uh, what it was like for her, especially being there. Well, we've, we've got well, to thank her, too, for relaying yeah. all the information she was getting in here, out here to us, so we could bring that's it true. to you. So yeah. it's been a very busy day for you, Jesse. So, Jesse, yeah. just tell us, uh, for start, from start to finish, I know part of the frustration was not being able to get any information. Mm -hmm. 
exactly. A lot of it was just a hurry up and wait kind of game. And I understand that there's, there's a process that goes with this where the prison is actually on the line of the last to know a lot of the information. And so that's why you might have seen stuff from the attorney general, stuff from possibly the governor's office on Twitter and other sources of social media before you would see something from me. And that's just because we're kind of the last line of contact in all of this. You know, the Arkansas Department of Correction, though, basically remains silent. I mean, they didn't tell us very much at all. So I, I know you said that they're, they get the information last, but they really just stayed out of it. They kind of just like to update on the process just as much as they can. And the spokesperson likes to be respectful of both sides because we have to remember that the inmate does have a family just as mm -hmm. the, his victim does have a family as well who was there. I'm not sure if his family was there, um, but the victim's family was of course there. And so I think that there's a very fine line. We have to be very respectful of kind of both sides. And I think that's why they don't get into too much of the nitty gritty and they let the media witnesses kind of just say exactly what they saw and just go from there and not try to speculate. Well, in part two, the Department of Correction is the Department of Correction. They're not a judicial branch, so they're not, they're, they're a, uh, I guess, the, the last stop when it comes to that. They're here to do a job, and their job is to house inmates and execute them. Mm -hmm. Um, not to react to what's happening one way or the other, I suppose. Exactly. But you can sell it till it still takes a toll, even though it's their sure. job. It, you know, we've been reporting on this for weeks now, months now. You know, what will this do to the people carrying these out? And, of course, we didn't get to talk to them, but just kind of seeing how it affected their fellow colleagues. I mean, you can tell that, it, like JR said, it's a very somber night for all of Arkansas. It's a weighty evening, and they don't take it lightly at all. You know, I'm wondering, though, just moving ahead to Monday, I know you're going to be one of the media witnesses. How do you feel going into that? Um, since that kind of still hangs in the balance, that's something that I always have to think about going to each one of these. You know, could I be the one to witness this? Hearing what the three um, witnesses saw today, um, I mean, you do have a responsibility. Some people were commenting on Twitter that, you know, the media just wants to jump in and see it. You know, they just want to volunteer and step up. But we have to. We're required to. It's our responsibility to report what we saw. And I think that what the witnesses saw tonight was very telling. One of the biggest arguments was that the drug... Um, Exactly. Would um, lead to cruel and unusual punishment for the inmate. But what you've been hearing from media witnesses was that it was actually almost kind of peaceful, that it didn't look like he was being hurt in any sort of way. And so I think that we have a responsibility to let people know that. All right. Well, you have done a great job in covering it and keeping us updated as much as you could tonight. So we thank you for that. Jesse Tenor, who spent all day in the media room and just keeping us updated with everything that was going on as much as she could. So I think that's going to pretty much wrap it up from here at the Cummins unit. Folks are leaving. Um, it's that over. The, and the uh, condemned inmate's uh, life ended here. A new chapter in Arkansas begins with the, uh, the commencing of a, a long list of uh, executions to come, at least until the end of the month, because that's when this drug, we keep going back, this drug, midazolam, expires. And we have three more executions, Bob. Right. We have two on Monday, and then we have one on Thursday. And none can go past April because we can't get any more of the, the drug. So that will exactly be an ongoing right. debate. So we'll send it back to you. That's it from the Cummins unit. Of course, we'll have more uh, tomorrow morning. It's already tomorrow morning. We'll have more. Yeah, that's right. We will. Donna and Bob, thanks very yeah. much. Again, just to, to wrap it all up, convicted murderer Liddell Lee um, dead tonight at 1156. Um, the family of Deborah Reese finally getting closure uh, for a crime that was committed in 1993. Yeah, uh, what a night. Uh, uh, history in the making, at least for the state of Arkansas. I'm not, uh, not sure how you want to interpret that when uh, when I say history in the making. But yes, uh, the first inmate to be executed in 12 years is, it, is taking place, and uh, we're not over yet, as right. Bob mentioned. And this was one of those things that went down to the wire, went all the way up to the Supreme Court. Um, so it has been a long day for everyone involved, and uh, we will have much more in the morning as we continue to gather more information in Lincoln County. We will bring it to you, of course, as soon as we get it online first. And of course, we go on the air tomorrow morning. KARK will begin at 4 a.m. And then, of course, Fox Good Day, that begins at what? 7, 7 o'clock. 7 a.m. until 9 a.m. So you can expect much more coverage tomorrow morning. Yeah, we'll be reviewing the execution of Liddell Lee and then uh, looking forward uh, for the next two executions, which will take place tentatively 
on Monday, Marcel Williams and Jack Jones. So uh, keep it here on both of our stations uh, for continuing coverage. But in the meantime, get some rest, get some sleep, and thank you so much for being a part uh, and watching our coverage. Good night.